What is up, down, and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It is Lee Gunlock, another episode flying Han Solo today as we got some... I mean, anytime T1 is on the rift these days is a marquee matchup in terms of people overreacting and panicking. We got playoff implications over in the LCS with some disaster eliminations happening. But we start as we are fully immersed in the Grizzly era. And this dude would be such a lock for rookie of the split after only playing a few weeks, if not for a little guy name pace because i i believe the lck it's just rookie of the year so there's no chance for anybody but pace to be winning this but let me tell you grizzly another fantastic performance on the rift this whole off the rift scandal with clid was the biggest blessing in disguise that han will life as a team and for the fans could have because they look like a totally different level with him playing and it was the viego today t1 suffering uh, at his hands. It was early and often. It was mid-game. It was late game. This dude was fully in control, um, completely gapped owner in this series, and it's more of the same concerns for T1. They looked a bit lost, especially in game one with what to do. It was just Hanwa having their pick of the litter. We'll get a little turret top lane, get a pick in the mid lane, grab a dragon here, force a team fight here that's in our favor, despite the very best, and I do mean very best, efforts of Gumi Yushi throughout this entire series on the Aphelios and then the Kaisa in game two. He was trying his damnedest to drag T1 to a victory screen, but Zeka on the Yone would not have it in any of these team fights. And, ah, Pobi, that's, that's a rough one. That was a rough Azir shuffle. That one didn't work out too well for him, but... There were a couple fights where Owner is just holding on to the Poppy ulti, doesn't even opt to use it, or when he does use it, he's whiffed completely. It was a series to forget for Owner particularly. I mean, 24 minutes, that first game was an absolute shellacking at the hands of Hanwha Life. They closed it out pretty cl cleanly. There was never any doubt that they were going to win that first game. There was, at the very least, bare minimum, a little bit of pushback out of T1 in that second game. And again, it was Guma on the Kaisa trying his absolute best. Actually loved the Galio pick out of Kyria. We love seeing some fancy, more off-meta picks out of him in the support lane. But this play from Viper is, oh my god, it's so damn smooth. With the feather pullback, Grizzly exactly where he should be. Viego in game one. Game two, you might say, what the heck are we seeing a Wukong for? That's old meta. There were something like four jungle bands targeted at this guy, and it was absolutely no problem. He just has a pop-off performance on the Wukong. But again, look at Guma. Look at Guma trying his very best to carry this one, although the flash predict there was, again, pretty smooth out of Viper as Zeus gets a cleanup kill. But still, it's, it's Hanwha coming out ahead of these fights. The gold lead was still even around this Baron fight. Viper had just gotten picked here. So this is actually a 4v5 in favor of T1. Grizzly gets the entire back line. Look at all the attention he's getting out of that stopwatch. And that is more than enough for Kingen on the King Croc to clean things up. Poby can't do anything. They eventually chase down Guma as well. But look at the theme in these fights. Poor Guma's just watching his team. Um, I don't want to say borderline hinting. The, the flank there is actually decent from Zeus, but ha Hanwa just plays it perfectly. He can't even get a stun on anybody. Owner did not have another... Well, he had another bad game on Vi. Wasn't able to really do anything. The W just misses there on Guma. It's... Ah. I mean, it should be more Hanwha looks great than T1. Again, I feel like we're going to just be rehashing the same topic over and over for T1 as we head towards the end of the regular season. They're they're going to be the fifth seed. That's it. With how Hanwha and D-plus are looking these days, there's a big enough gap between them, Kwangdong Freaks, and anyone else who sneaks into that sixth seed. The T1, to me, seems like basically a lock to be that fifth spot. I don't see Faker coming back before... Uh, the playoffs, maybe they try and sneak in one game at the end of the regular season. But the question is going to be, do things just instantly get fixed when Faker comes back on the lineup? How much pressure is this dude to all of a sudden make everyone remember how to play the game properly? Because these guys look like shells of their former selves. Uh, a lot of them, especially Owner and even Kyria. Kyria is still fine, but 
find for Kyria is miles, leaps and bounds below the expectation we have for the guy who we always are talking about as the best support in the world. So it's it's going to be a slog getting towards playoffs. Can Faker turn things around for the squad immediately when he gets back on the squad? The miracle run on the LCS side of things. FlyQuest, everyone getting excited. We say, okay, it's, it's all the buildup. It's all the lead up to that Cloud9 matchup. But first, you got to take care of business against Immortals. And it was a little sloppy early on. But the boys, we got Vikla on the Yone. Spica on the Ivern. All these massive power picks. And they were able to execute these team fights. Vikla had some great ultis on the Yone. Spica, we love seeing on something like the Ivern. That's a pick he's excelled on. Even despite tactical having a fantastic game on the zaya big daddy impact is saying i can smell it boys i smell the playoffs cooking do you smell what impact is cooking and as they force in the baron prince goes in on the kaisa able to clean everybody out tactical can't do anything they zone can be away grab the baron snowball the game out of control yes it took over 33 minutes for things to actually happen 38 minutes actually for things to close out but doesn't matter. They get the win. 6-11. and 11. The playoff dream still alive for the boys from FlyQuest. The problem, and let me tell you, it's a very big problem. Of those 11 losses, four of them, they were 0-2 and two against Dignitas. That's why Dig already clinched the previous day with just seven wins to their name. And on the other side of things, they were also 0-2 and two against the boys from 100 Thieves. So, 100 Thieves basically just need to have a win themselves. They were matching up against the powerhouse NRG who had just, yes, I say powerhouse because they had just taken down Cloud9. Things were looking pretty, but guys, this is the former CounterLogic Gaming organization. So, of course, they're going to beat the best team in the league and then lose to a team that has been floundering and make closer finally on the Viego. One of the picks we're always associating with him. It took him 16 games to look like that MVP form. But in a game that it is the most important, it matters the most on the entire season, we get a vintage closer performance. He grabs the triple on Viego. He was grabbing Baron steals later. He, if you had just isolated this one game, it would look like 2021 or 2022 levels out of closer, which you love to see. Double lift in a Kaisa meta, something else you love to see. We've got many, many highlight reels of him on Team Liquid popping off on that pick. 100 Thieves, doesn't matter, FlyQuest. Great, you won against Immortals. You're gone, eliminated ousted the super team that was supposed to be at, at redemption have hope for na at the international stage they don't even make it to the best of rounds an absolute um, disaster and i know people are going to say oh man it would have been so much more exciting if FlyQuest was there or a hundred thieves over dignitas because we don't have any faith in those squads and i mean to be honest i don't have a ton of faith in either of those squads as well, but that's the name of the game. 11 losses to your name, and you don't deserve to go to playoffs, even if we talk about time and time again, yeah, but the ceiling, the potential is like top three worthy for this FlyQuest squad, but the lows that we saw out of them, that's it. I mean, it was bad, and despite maybe they're probably going to win their last match and go 3-0, and and then it's even more painful that they're not going to be making playoffs, but 11 losses, you can't be upset if you do not make it to playoffs, even when there's eight teams. Should we expand the pool? Nine teams go to playoffs in the LCS? Obviously, I jest. Nobody in their right mind wants that, but unbelievable that we are talking about this FlyQuest squad. You would have been disappointed if they lost early in the playoffs, didn't have a deep run, not even making playoffs. FlyQuest just holding hands with the Brethren Vitality Super Team, not even making top eight. Absolutely unbelievable. But 100 Thieves, hey, who knows? If Closer plays like this in playoffs, maybe they can actually make some noise. Another solid vehicle performance on the day. EG, shaded, popping off. I thought it was going to be 
The return to our Mayo in this one, because in their little announcement video, Evil Geniuses, Kelsey Moser just, just referenced specifically that Immortals match that he would be starting, but he gets the start against Team Liquid, and we weren't too excited about EG looking good against Immortals, because again, a lot of people have been doing that, but a step up against Team Liquid, and we get this old, you know, last year meta Ash Heimer pick, but... Ayla had a, his best game of the split, maybe, on the rel. He was finding constant engages across the map. APA even got really fed on this Tristana, but never really had an opportunity to do anything. Always a treat to see JoJo on the Silas. Still not his greatest performance on the pick, but uh, it, was, it was all about Ayla and all about Unforgiven uh, playing at a high level as well on this Kai'Sa. But EG... Finding form or refining that form at the right time after that four game losing streak. Now they're very much back in that contention for uh, one of these top three spots, maybe even top two, depending on how that last game goes. Obviously, they need a loss from C9 or Golden Guardians, but really uh, starting to see again that early season form out of them. I'm, I'm still not confident in them. Uh, against the top two really what we've seen over the last two weeks and especially this week is the distance between cloud nine and the rest of the squads even though c9 dropped to energy i i no one's saying that you'd be picking energy in a series matchup against cloud nine so feeling good about c9 and gg there's still that tier below with energy eg i'm not even confident putting team liquid there uh now but i mean now you pretty much got most of the seedings Again, it's not a huge deal, honestly, um, what the seating is in the LCS because I guess you want double, you want to be able to have that extra life and find the double Elim part of the bracket, but pretty confident that C9 and Golden Guardians are going to be 1-2, whatever order that's going to end up being. And now EG sitting pretty with 11 wins, probably uh, locked for that third seed. Outside of that, I mean, I think anybody can beat anybody. Team Liquid well, could beat... If you go all the way down to 100 Thieves or Dignitas being 8, it's not a huge upset for them to beat TL or even EG. The only upset I can see is GG or Cloud9 losing. That's the only thing I would really consider an upset. But obviously, story of the day and story of the split, story of the year is FlyQuest not even making it to top 8. I can't imagine this roster is going to stick together, which means it's really too bad because FlyQuest is an organization everybody wants to root for. Most of the players on FlyQuest are players are people that you want to root for. So kind of sad all around that they won't be representing NA, not even internationally, but even at the LCS playoffs. This is an all-time disappointment for a star-studded roster. That is it today, though, for League Unlocked. Thank you, you beautiful people, for watching. As always, enjoy all the fantastic games on the weekend, and we will be back on Monday to recap it all.